So, hello, uh, my name is Zach Allen, and I'm going to be showing you a tutorial, a uh, very fast tutorial, how to make something like this. It looks better, I promise. This one is basically a version of a guy's tutorial, Andrew Price. He's awesome. He made a tutorial how to make raindrops, but he didn't make a tutorial on how to do an animation because there's a piece he was missing. And while I'm not claiming I'm better than him, by any stretch of imagination, I think this is useful to know. This one doesn't look as good as what I'm going to show you, but I haven't rendered the one I'm going to show you yet because it takes goodness gracious too long. And next out of this, I'm going to show you that thing. Uh, this might not look like much if I go back to view top. You can see it's kind of sideways, but anyway, I'll end that back up. So this might not look like much. Um, probably looks like a really crappy raindrop. It's a little bit rougher than you might expect, which is totally fine. That's how it has to be. The important thing is that I can move it through the space and it will update. And it will, you know, it will, um, on its own, I'm not doing anything to it. This is not some animation that was previously recorded. Um, I am moving this, and in real time, it is regenerating new content and shaping. If I go Control D, put that thing there, and then move both of them down, you'll see that they are different, and they are individual. They are separate objects. Um, there's a little bit of overlap in some parts, like right here, there's a skinny bit, but... That's just because of how things line up. If I move them in the Y direction, it looks really weird, but it works. Anyway, so what this is, I'm going to delete this one. This is a way using displace modifiers and textures to actively generate um, raindrop shaving, which is something that is kind of necessary to make an animation out of it, because live sculpting each and every shape of this for each and every drop would take unthinkably long, which is why I didn't do it. Anyway, uh, showing you the basics of how this works, I'm going to hide a lot of the other pieces. This is just the basic. There's a smooth modifier on because I think it looks better. Anyway, but what it basically is, I have two displacement textures and some subsurfs and smooths and stuff like that. But I have two displacement textures, two displacement modifiers with textures on each one. And the, the values look like this. They're all supposed to be visible. They're just invisible because I'm explaining things. Uh, these are the values. You can pause the screen and look at what you want. Feel free to change them around. It will work a lot better. Anyway, so I'm going to go into this thing. This is a Musgrave texture with these values. Pause the screen if you want. And basically what it does is this Musgrave texture is mapped into the world space, which means that mapping from this intersection of the green and the red line, which is the origin, that texture is in all points in this space, even though you can't see it. Sorry, that's a little bit of another thing later. And that texture is at all points in this space. So when this thing moves through it, if it's displaced by that value, then at each point in space, I can't show you this with my finger, but I'm pointing to the little, I guess I can just say, at the green line, you notice that it always jogs similarly as if it were moving across a path, as opposed to just a wiggle. And so, basically this is mapped to space, and this thing moves through it, which displaces it side to side. Um, once again, going back through these, going to re-show them. Uh, do -do -do. Um, making sure I did all that right, yes. Alright, so that was the big wiggle, which is what I called it. That's the main, that's the larger chunks. And then the smaller wiggle, um, that had a vertex group. It was just like the sides, not the middle, because I think it looks better. Uh, all of these are mapped in the x direction with global coordinates. Um, I'm going to show you this. This is a ridged multifractal with these values. There's nothing special about these. It's just what you see here. Uh, yeah, so that is how you make those things. The way you make the actual shape itself, if I go into edit mode, it starts off like, or it is like this, before all the modifiers. What this is, is just a standard sphere. And then I select the bottom vertex, and I move it up. And with proportional editing magic, I flatten all this stuff out. Then I select some faces over here, move them out, extrude them a bunch, so that the computer has lots of geometry to work with. Uh, do, 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 out of edit mode. And that means that the computer can move all these things. There's also some subsurf and things like that. Uh, the dynamic paint, I'll explain what it is, and then I'm going to explain what it's doing. Right now, it needs to be black with mess volume, 
and none of these things are important in any way. You don't use those. And if you understand them, use them. Be awesome. Uh, yeah, that's the basics of this part of it, the raindrop. Then I'm going to go into this other piece. Do, And that is... Woo! That is our set. That's all the pieces. This is the painted glass behind it. I'll explain that thing later. What I did for all these raindrops is, um, you might think it's a particle system and you would be mostly right. I'd hoped it used, I'd hoped that it could be a particle system, but I was apparently deceived. You start out with a particle system. I just put like a plane up here that emits particles. And then I set it up so that, um, at frame zero, all the particles that I needed to be in the world were in the world. Which meant that when I went to the modifier for that thing, and I hit apply this as a dynamic paint, but if I hit the apply for the modifier on uh, the particle system, then it would create these as their own objects. Sadly, the particle system, as far as I can find, doesn't allow it to update its space, or its um, position in space, which means that these don't work as particles. But you can just do it um, as objects, and then you can move them around. Like, you know, you can put this thing on the thirds point, which you can see... Um, all of that is explained in the tutorial, which I should have linked earlier, but there will be another one again. Uh, a tutorial by Andrew Price. Again, he's better than me at this, by a lot. He explains the camera stuff, all the stuff you need there. Um, in the background, he just put a bunch of balls, and I wanted this to be moving, so I have a particle system. These don't have to be converted. There, there's the convert button. I don't want to click that, because these things can just be particles. Um, that's the inside of what you saw earlier. These things are the source of those particles. They are they are emission, but you notice that they're the emission from volume. I like that because it gives you like the faded edge look, as opposed to just, oh look, there's a circle of color. I didn't like that look. And that's just me. So these are the basics. Um, you can put them however you want. Basically, it's almost exactly like how Andrew Price does it, but this one is procedurally generated and moves. So I like mine better, but, you know, just reference him, um, make them volumes. It's pretty much everything for that bit. Um, this thing is a blue light, just like he has, but this one is also a volume. I made it so it was domed so that it would have more light coming out of it, but it's essentially the same idea, excuse me, <coughs> essentially the same idea as the um, original uh, author of this idea, Andrew Price, did. That's, you know, he had just a circle plane, but I made it a volume, because I like the volume better. Um, for the background, I don't know if I explained it at all, but I have um, a mirror ball style environment image. Um, I don't know if there's a good way to show you. I hope this works. Goodness gracious, I hope this works. So this is just a rendered view. There we go. Yay, it works. This is just an image that I mapped to the world space, as you can see. This is the basics of what these look like. Um, this image, which I mapped to the world space, is just like a basic city. Uh, you never actually see it. Excuse me. You never actually see it. Hold up. No, no, no. Rendered. You never actually see that image in the background directly, but you'll see it in reflections, and it gives like a color other than just, oh, look, water reflecting the void, because that looks boring. I don't like it. So I changed it. Um, you can change however you want, it's totally up to you, and yeah, so, going out of that, I'm going to show you the basics of the node setup for these. These ones, I don't remember if they have a node setup. They don't. It's just glass. Uh, water, technically, because that's the I.O. for water. But, if I go back into 3D view and select this thing, this thing's a lot more complicated. Um, I'm sure you guys can fill in the details on this. If you want me to make a long, full tutorial, I can do that. But it's going to be annoying. Anyway, so if we go into this one for the node editor, there's a lot of stuff going on. What is that? Oh, okay. There's a lot of stuff going on. Um, the way this thing is, is this is a dynamic paint. I should show you the dynamic paint stuff. So if I go into the dynamic paint here, sorry, someone's texting me. If I go into the dynamic paint here, and you can see that it, there's a format image sequence at 1800. Um, the res resolution of 1800. I'm actually just going to scroll through this and let you look at it. Um, this is all of it. You don't have to use shrink or spread or drip. You just uncheck, use, whatever. 
because it's not really important. I just used it because I wanted to see what it did. But you don't have to. It takes up time for like the baking process. You know, you gotta bake that, and then you reference in the node editor. You reference that as the paint map. So I can look in here, and it's the paint map hashtag da 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 da. But what that is is you put in. Uh, hold up. Control A, input. Nope. Control A, texture image sequence and then you select your image from your paint map series and it'll just go through you have to set the frames to 250 or however many frames you use auto refresh and then I'm just gonna scroll through here um, I don't understand exactly what all these pieces do but I just know that they work and they did all the things I wanted um, this thing is how you get that speckled texture on the glass I'll just show you uh, there you go. This is a render from this setup. So you can see that there's like the halo edges. If you zoom in here, you can see right over here that there's like part of the building reflecting in the drop. Because everything's like distorted and semi-spherical, it doesn't really matter. You're never really going to see anything. And you can see that there are in fact tracks cut out by the water in the glass. They're not cut out, but you know, um, made to be less rough. I don't know a good way to say it. Who cares? Um, you know what I mean. So basically, this is the basics of what's going on for the mod, the shader. Again, this goes to the glass pane, and then I think that's almost all the things. Uh, there's one more thing. So if we go into Node Editor and go into Compositing, a um, little bit of a mess, not too bad. Basically, what this is is um, if you add the direct and indirect for a transmission. And then again for glossy, you need to do it again for diffuse if you had diffuse, but there's no diffuse in this image. Um, for a transmission and glossy, then you add those together. You you add those to the direct and indirect, and then you multiply by the color, and that'll give you um, the output for transmission. But there were slight problems with um, indirect being really rough and caustic, so I put in a blur there to reduce that problem. Um, I did that for glossy and transmission because those are the only two channels I have. The diffuse is in fact invisible, which is kind of nice. Um, it also means that the background never shows up directly on its own. It only shows up in reflections and refractions if those ever happen. Um, you mul multiply the transmission or the um, glossy and transmission. You multiply the glossy pieces and the transmission. Pe glossy pieces by other glossy pieces and the transmission pieces by other transmission pieces. Then you add them together. Goodness gracious, that's hard to say. You add them together with about that ratio. Do what you want. Um, and then you add to that the emissions, or sorry, not emissions, environment um, output. You have to check all those in... Which thing is it? It's not that one. Do, do, do. This one. There we go. You have to check it in the passes section. Anyway. And then... I had a defocus thing over here because um, the camera's f-stop, which by the way is f-stop of 1 and focus on the empty you saw earlier, um, which is placed on the on the pane of glass at the um, thirds mark. Anyway, so all those I have set up as is. Um, this is the defocus thing because I wanted it to be more out of focus, and then it goes to composite. And then... When you render all that stuff, you get this thing. This thing took, if my memory serves, about five to six minutes to render, which is, I think, okay. I think it looks all right. There are a few little problems. There's a little bit of more blurriness than I want, and the uh, fog is not exactly what I was hoping for, but it'll do. Um, but again, this is frame 163, and if I were to render the previous frame, it would be an animation. I haven't done that yet, because I'm lazy, and... I haven't rendered everything, but yeah, um, thank you for watching, this is my first tutorial, if you came here from the link, uh, from the False Gemini, I am in fact that person, um, you should subscribe to the False Gemini because I think it's pretty fab, so is my sister, um, hopefully I will have more of these videos to come, if you have requests, please put them in the comments, I would love to hear more things to do, because I am bored out of my mind. Also, if you have no idea what False Gemini is, there will be a link in the description. Click on it. Trust me. Um, 
that's it. I have seven, six, five more seconds. So bye.